Okay, hello friends. Uh, good day to you all. God bless you and welcome to this family Bible study. Last time in Exodus chapter 21, uh, we started the general laws, the laws for man concerning uh, persons and property. And in the last verse of, or the last two uh, verses of Exodus 21, it was about if one man's ox hurt another man's ox that he die, then he shall sell the live ox and divide the money of it. And the dead ox also they shall divide. 36 was, or if it be known that the ox hath used to push in the time past, or he used to, uh, he had a history of uh, fighting or killing other animals in the time past, and his owner hath not kept him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. So with chapter 22 of Exodus, we're going to continue in these uh, general laws concerning uh, persons and property. So with the word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's precious name, we're going to get right into it. Uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 22, uh, verse 1, and it reads, If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Pretty self-explanatory. If he steals an ox, sells it or kills it, he's got to restore uh, five oxen for that one ox that he stole. And if it's a sheep, four sheep for the sheep. Verse 2. If a thief be found breaking up or breaking in and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. Or excuse me, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I thought I had a double page going on. <clears throat> so if a thief is breaking in uh, somewhere and he's caught, and he is smitten that he's that he dies uh, that is enough payment uh, no one in, in his family uh, or any you know anyone close to him should have to die since he's already dead <clears throat> verse 3 if the sun be risen upon him there shall be there sh there shall be blood shed for him for he should make full restitution if he have nothing, then he shall be sold for then he shall be sold for his theft. So this what this means is if the sun be risen upon him, if the thief were to get away and is then found and killed, which would be in cold blood. So if somebody's breaking in, robbing somewhere, and he gets away and the person's house that he uh, broke into doesn't catch him in the act but knows that who it was or who, who the thief was and a day goes by and then the person whose house was robbed or item was stolen goes and finds this person who broke in and decides to kill him in cold blood then uh, that man whose house was broken in who decided to go kill the thief in cold blood after a day, uh, he's going to have to pay um, for that with his life. And then if he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. Okay, so if the thief doesn't have any anything to restore the value of the item that he stole that he stole uh, he himself should be sold for to pay the value of the item that that was stolen verse 4 if the theft be certainly found in his hand alive whether it be ox or ass ass being a donkey or sheep he shall restore double so if the thief steals an ox or an ass or a sheep and he's caught with the uh, animal and the animal is still alive, then the thief should uh, have to 
not only give the animal back, but he shall restore double. He shall uh, give him uh, two more uh, sheep or at donkeys or oxen or pay the amount thereof. <clears throat> Verse 5. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten and shall put in his beast and he shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard shall he make restitution. So if, if a man has a field and his ox or beast has eaten up all of the 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 pasture the grass in that field or whatever may be growing there <clears throat> and he decides to uh, open up the gate to his <clears throat> to his neighbor's pasture and goes and lets his his animals feed off of his neighbor's pasture and if he's caught doing it then of the best of his own field and his own vineyard shall he make restitution so then when his field grows back he he needs to let the neighbor's animals uh, come, come over there and feed off of his field because that, that would be wrong to do that to allow your animals to feed in, in a neighbor's field just because they had eaten up all of the, the food or grass if you will in, uh, in your field verse 6 <clears throat> if a, if fire break out and catch in thorns so that the stacks of corn or the standing corn or the field be consumed therewith, he that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. So whoever had lit the fire and didn't take proper care of it and let it get out of control, he needs to be the one to pay the restitution. Verse 7, if a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. Verse 8, if the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have put his hand unto his neighbor's goods. So if a man asks his neighbor to hold some money for him or some of his things uh, and then is stolen out of uh, that, that person's house that he asked to hold it, if the thief is not found, so say that you... you ask your neighbor to hold something and something gets stolen uh, of yours while they were holding it for you um, and they they claim that it was stolen but there's no proof because there's no thief that was caught then this matter would be taken unto the judges to decide Verse 9, for all manner of trespass, this word trespass is rebellion. In the Hebrew, it's pasha, and it means sin against lawful authority. Whether it be for ox, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, which is clothes, or for any manner of lost thing, which another challengeth to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. Pretty self-explanatory. Verse 10. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, donkey, or an ox, or a sheep, or any beast, to keep, and it die, or be hurt, or driven away, no man seeing it, that means no witnesses. 11. Then shall an oath of the Lord, Yahweh, be between them both, that he hath not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods, 
and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. So uh, they need if if he they pretty much swear to each other that he had not put his hand into his neighbor's good. And if if this is from a Christian brother or Christian sister, you just need to uh, take their word for it uh, before the Lord God and accept it and not uh, cause them to make make it good or replace place the, the beast. Verse 12. And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. 13. If it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness, and he shall not make good that which was torn. So whatever item it is, or livestock, you need to show the evidence that, hey, this is what happened to it, and then it won't have to repay for that because it was an accident. Verse 14. And if a man borrow, <clears throat> borrow aught, which means anything, of his neighbor, and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. 15. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be an hired thing, it came for his hire. So if the owner is with it and witnesses it, or if you paid to hire, um, or if you paid for this thing, <clears throat> it's an hired thing. And uh, just because something happened to it, uh, the only restitution that would be would be the original pay that you paid to hire uh, the animal or pay for whatever item this is. 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, meaning not married, and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So if, he, if they have sexual intercourse, then he needs to make her his wife. 17. If her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. And this uh, dowry of virgins you'll find in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verses 28 and 29. And that would be 50 shekels. Eighteen, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, or permit a witch to live. And this word witch, <clears throat> or spiritist, in the Hebrew, in your con Strong's Concordance in the Hebrew Dictionary, it's word number 3784, and it's kosaf. And it means to whisper a spell i.e. to enchant or practice magic. So this is a wish, a witch, magician, or a sorcerer. Basically, self-explanatory. Thou shalt not suffer a witch, magician, or sorcerer to live. 19. <clears throat> Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. And this is talking about uh, bestiality or when humans have some sort of sexual intercourse uh, or perversion with an animal. And if you don't think it happens, um, you'd be thinking wrong because it does happen. It is absolutely disgusting and perverted, but in this world it does happen. Twenty, verse 20 he that sacrificeth unto any god lower g lowercase g save unto the lord only yahweh only he shall utterly be destroyed that's pretty self-explanatory as well and beloved there is no god besides our heavenly father yahweh and you know you can be under the illusion many people are under the illusion and they do make sacrifices to things that they whittle out of 
uh, earthly elements or, or natural products like wood and stone. And they will get out there and worship these things of wood or stone that are not even alive. And instead of worshiping our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and he does not appreciate it, nor does he like it at all. So just don't do it. You'd only be fooling yourself and pissing the Lord, uh, our Heavenly Father, off real, real, real good. And you just don't want to kindle his anger like that. But if you don't do that, then you don't have anything to worry about. He's not angry at you. 21. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger or a sojourner, nor oppress him. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And they were uh, strangers in the land of Egypt in captivity for almost 400 years and or approximately 400 years and uh, treated absolutely terribly by Pharaoh and the taskmasters. So God's reminding them, don't forget about how you, you know, that you were a stranger in the land of uh, Egypt and how you were treated. So you don't need to vex a stranger nor oppress him. And this word vex in the Hebrew dictionary of your Strong's Concordance is 3238 and it's yaw and it means to rage or be violent <clears throat> against a stranger. 22. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. <clears throat> and in the Hebrew, this word afflict means to oppress or deal hardly with. And this uh, widow or fatherless child this is put for all kinds of helpless uh, persons or helpless ones. You know, you don't want to afflict or oppress or deal hardly with people who are helpless and uh, innocent. 23. I mean, that, that would, that, like you said, a fatherless child. I was going to say that includes a child, but there it is, or any child, in my opinion. <clears throat> but especially a widow or a fatherless child because they don't have anyone to defend them, to defend, uh, provide any defense for them. And you'd have to be pretty sick individual to want to, to do anything to a helpless one anyways. Now, I know you're not like that, but believe me, there's people out there that are. God's got it all in the book. He's keeping real, real good score. And and that's something that, that, that you really need to remember. He is keeping it all in the book. And so you want your page clean. And you want blessings written on your, your page in the book of life. And, and not only your name you want written in the book of life. But you want blessings and good works by your name. And... How do you have that come judgment day? How do you make that happen? Well, first, you've got to repent for your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and believe that he died on the cross and rose again the third day. And then after that, you've got to stay in good standing by uh, continued repentance. And that's that beauty that we have in Christianity is that ability to, to repent for our sins and as long as we mean it of course you can't con God because he even knows what you're thinking uh, as long as you mean it then those sins are wiped away that page is clean and if you've got good works and have studied God's word you've got a page full of blessings coming on judgment day there'll be a lot that won't but there certainly be what will be ones that will you can be one of those that will it's up to you Twenty three. <laughs> if thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. This is what God thinks about oppressing defenseless ones. Listen up. Twenty four. 
and my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. There you go. So, don't mess with the defenseless ones. Simple as that. 25. If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, Thou shalt not be to him as an usurer, as an usurer or a money lender. Neither shalt thou lay upon him usury or interest. If you give a loan to one of your Christian brothers uh, or sisters, don't charge them interest. Or, or even for that matter, I would, you know, I would throw in even a neighbor if they're, if they're not Christian. You know, if 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 you've got a decent relationship with them as neighbors and and they need to borrow some money and you lend to them don't charge them interest just expect back what you loan them there's no reason to charge them interest because because then you would be trying to profit in a way off of somebody's hard luck or situation to where they needed uh, your help and that's not right to do that. <clears throat> it pretty uh, pretty much it, it would uh, take that good work that you would have written down in the book of life, and it would probably wash it right away, uh, charging them interest. Twenty six. If thou take at all thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, his, his covering, his mantle, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that, by, by that the sun goeth down. Why, why is this? God's going to tell you. 27. For that is his covering only. If it is his, ra it is his raiment for his skin, or his coat for his skin, wherein shall he sleep? Question. And it shall come to path, pass when he crieth unto me that I will hear, for I am gracious, and God is gracious. And, and the ones who are oppressed that cry out to him, he does hear them. Um, you know, example, the children of Israel who were being oppressed in the land of Egypt by Pharaoh's taskmasters. And what did they do? They cried unto God. And what did he do? He heard them and he delivered them. And what happened to the taskmasters and Pharaoh? They're uh, washed up on the shore of the Red Sea. And I'm sure some of them probably are still down at the bottom of the Red Sea. Our Heavenly Father hears. And you may get away with something for a short time, oppressing someone or afflicting them, treating them wrong, and they're defenseless. You may get away with it on the spot or for a short time but just know our heavenly father pays attention and he hears those ones that cry out to him uh, just as uh, he heard righteous Abel's uh, blood crying from the ground 28. and so God's gonna God's gonna take care of those that can't take care of themselves and you do not want to be in the way of God's wrath when he's coming after someone who has oppressed one of his little ones that is helpless. Now, this want to, this thou shalt deliver it unto him by the sun goeth down and back in 26. I missed this. I want to go back and cover this. In the desert, and in the wilderness, it gets really cold at night. And so, if you borrow your neighbor's covering, you want to make sure that he has it back before nighttime because that's what he has to keep himself warm at night. 28. Thou shalt not revile the gods, or this would be uh, the, the judges that are in place of of God in God's stead <clears throat> nor curse the ruler of thy people and so these elect officials that are in office that we have today 
even if you don't agree with them and their decisions, uh, you don't need to curse them. You need to rather, in fact, as a Christian, you should be praying for them because uh, some of these elected officials that we have today, uh, I'm not going to say any particulars, but they need uh they need help in their decision making and the way that they think and their morals and things like that. Of course, I'm not judging. I'm just stating a fact. It's obvious to see if you just watch the news for a couple of hours. But if you by cursing them and, and uh, slandering them, talking bad about them, that's not going to change anything. The best thing that you can do is uh, intervene by praying for them and asking God to give them guidance and wisdom to make better decisions because like it or not they've been elected into office and for that term period that's who your elected official is going to be and so rather than tear them down you would want to pray that God give them wisdom and guidance and uh, convict them of uh, things that are wrong and that's going to be your best uh, avenue to approach uh, in causing change to happen in that person is to pray to God because God God can change people's minds. I have seen it time and time again. He surely can because God is the cardio knower, the heart knower, and he even knows what they're thinking. Twenty nine. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors. Now, this ripe fruits and liquors, this means thy corn and thy wine and thy oil. <clears throat> the firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. And this would be uh, dedicating them to being priests of the Lord. And this would happen on the eighth day when they were circumcised. 31, and ye shall be holy men unto me, neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field, ye shall cast it to the dogs. And this means that if there's something that's been killed, uh, we call it roadkill today, or, or anything that, that's killed out in nature, uh, God doesn't want you eat, eating it because naturally those scavengers have come in. Uh, vultures and other birds and uh, just scavengers have come in and, you know, eaten on the carcass. And God doesn't like uh, for us to eat scavengers. Actually, he says, don't do it, basically. And also, you've got flies and other things that could have come and, and gotten on the carcass and, you know, brought any kind of disease. It's just nasty. So God says, cast it to the dogs. They love to have it. There's plenty of bones in there for them to chew. And so that's a good place for it to go to the dogs. All right. That's going to conclude chapter 22. Um, in chapter 23, we're going to continue uh, these general laws. But that's going to conclude today's Bible study and uh, today's lecture. I love you, but God loves you more. Why? Because you love studying his word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And it makes his day. It, I'm sure it does. There's not a lot of people in this world today that remember our Heavenly Father. That a lot of people don't even think about him. And some even hate him. Um, they'll get theirs. But it's your decision. This is your citizenship. It is up, it is up to you to sail your own citizenship. And I would implore you to sail it uh, the path that Christ blazed because he is the only path. And that's good, that path's going to lead you to eternal life. It's going to lead you to protection uh, from our Heavenly Father and blessings from our Heavenly Father. And how do we follow Jesus Christ? Well, we've got to figure out uh, how to do that by opening his word and studying it chapter by chapter and verse by verse and if you have trouble studying just find a teacher doesn't matter who it is as long as they teach chapter by chapter and verse by verse whereby it's thus saith the Lord God and not thus saith some man then you're going to be getting that spiritual food that your soul needs to understand 
uh, these end times to understand what God wants from you, how to please Him, and uh, what He expects of you. And it's amazing. Every, every question that I've ever had in my entire life, uh, I've been able to find answers for in this book. And God's Word is pregnant. It grows as the times grow. And it comes to pass exactly as it's written. Um, just believe that. And so don't be deceived. Don't be caught up in these end times whenever Satan shows up with his fallen angels at the sixth trump uh, working miracles and pretending to be Christ. And that's how God's going to test his children. He's going to allow Satan to come down here for five months with his fallen angels and supernatural spiritual bodies and play little Jesus boy. Are you ready for that? You better get ready for it because it's coming, my friends. It's right over the hill. And so watch, watchmen, watch. Don't be deceived. The true Christ comes at the seventh trump. Satan comes at the sixth trump, pretending to be God. And believe me, Satan is the most wise and beautiful angel that God ever created. And so he knows the scripture better than any of us. And he was even wise, he's even wiser than Daniel. So don't think that you can go warring against Satan by yourself, but you always have power over him and all your enemies in Christ's name. Luke chapter 10, verses 17, 18, and 19 will document that. It's always in Christ's name. We have no power and we are nothing without God. But in his name, you can be a pretty mighty war warrior against the devil. So with that said, don't miss the next lecture. Love you guys. See you next time.